Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so I wanted to provide an update on the wildfire smoke impacting millions of Americans across the country right now. The president was briefed on the wildfires in Canada last week and has been regularly updated since. He directed his team to provide impacted communities whatever support they need. Our team here at the White House is in touch with the government of Canada. We have already deployed over 600 U.S. firefighters and personnel, as well as equipment like water bombers to help Canada battle the fires. We also have been in close touch with state and local leaders, including, including in Michigan, Illinois, and New York and multiple agencies, including the Environmental Protection Agency, CDC, and FEMA are coordinating with state, local, and tribal governments to get timely and accurate information out to communities about local air quality conditions and what steps they can take to protect themselves. We encourage everyone in the impacted areas to listen, to listen to their state and local officials. Check in on your neighbors, check in on your, your friends and your family. Take precautions, especially if you, are, if you have health conditions. You can also go to airnow.gov. That's A-I-R-N-O-W dot gov. Again, that's a airnow.gov to get real-time information about air quality and precautions you can take. Or download the app, the AirNow app, from the App Store as well. You are able to do that. Now, I know for many communities out west, this is nothing new. They experience this every year, but it is certainly getting worse. It is yet another ex alarming example of the ways in which the climate crisis is disturbing our lives and our communities. That's why from day one, President Biden rightfully recognized the climate crisis, climate change, as one of, uh, one of the four crises facing our nation as he was coming into the Oval Office to, uh, after being inaugurated and why he, why he made tackling climate change one of his top priorities and has done historic investments in doing just that, taking, uh, taking move forward with historic, historic policies. And so with that, uh, I'll go to the, uh, we'll continue to keep, uh, keep up and continue to get updated on what's happening. Um, so the next thing I have here is I also uh, wanted to take a moment to highlight important progress states are making with President Biden's full support to make our community safer from gun violence. Over the past week, Connecticut, Vermont, Colorado, Hawaii have all enacted common sense gun safety bills that will save lives. And here are a few examples. Of that's what's happening in those particular states. In Connecticut, Governor Ned Lamont signed a gun violence prevention bill that will strengthen safe storage requirements, close loopholes in the state's ban on assault weapons, expand accountability for gun dealer and more. And in Colorado, Governor Jared Polis signed a law cracking down on unserialized firearms known as ghost guns. This progress comes as 10 states, and including D.C., have now passed statewide assault weapons ban. With every tragic shooting we see across America, we see the urgency of action at every level of our government. The president thanks and applauds the advocates and state leaders who work tirelessly to enact these latest gun safety measures and continue to urge others to follow their lead and Congress to act at the federal level. Today, the Council of Economic Advisors released a blog showing grocery inflation is indeed slowing with prices of eggs and produce such as vegetables and fruit falling in recent months. As you know, grocery prices rose because of the global supply chain, bottleneck and unforeseen supply shocks like avian flu and war in Ukraine and also poor weather. As we've worked to address those bottlenecks and supply shocks, inflation for groceries is indeed cooling. Of course, we still have a lot more work to do, as you hear uh, from us from this administration, which is why the president's team is responding quickly to avian flu outbreaks among bird populations, increasing competition in meat industry, and strengthening supply chains that were weakened by COVID and Putin's war in Ukraine. And finally, I'd like to make an announcement that the President will welcome Jens Stoltenberg, Secretary General of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO, to the White House on Monday, June 12th, to discuss the upcoming NATO summit uh, that's going to be occurring in Lithuania. President Biden and Secretary General Stoltenberg will review preparations for the summit, including the work to further strengthen allied, uh, allied deterrence and defense 
build on the 2014 Whale Summit Defense Investment Pledge and deepen NATO's partnership. They will also discuss uh, ally support for Ukraine in the face of Russia's brutal war of aggression. With that, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, first, on, uh, next on um, Ukraine, does the administration have any better insight on uh, who or what caused the collapse of the dam? So look, uh, we're still assessing what happened. Uh, we're, we are indeed in touch with the Ukrainians. Uh, it is uh, the damage, obviously, and the devastation that we're seeing is heartbreaking. Uh, we will do everything that we can to help the people of Ukraine, certainly. Uh, but I'll say this, and you've heard us say this before, just yesterday, Russia has no business to be uh, there in the first place. And, uh, you know, Russia, this was, uh, uh, this dam was under Russia's control, and they bear responsibility for the destruction uh, caused by this war, and we will do everything that we can uh, to support the people of Ukraine at this dif difficult time. And if I could just ask on the on the smoke, um, is the White House, um, and particularly the president, taking any sort of further precautions just for, their, for your own personal safety? And is this going to change at all? I know earlier today, at least it sounded like tomorrow might be worse in the Washington area, and there's supposed to be a big event on the um, South Lawn. Um, is anything being changed up at the White House as so a result? In regards to the Pride event, as you just mentioned, Amr, which is going to be on the South Lawn tomorrow, I, I don't have any logistical updates to share at the moment. Uh, but of course, we're going to continue to monitor the situation. Just don't have anything to share at this time. As far as uh, if we're going to be changing uh, our approach here uh, at the White House, we just don't have any changes and updates uh, to, to report at this time. Um, just, I guess, to follow up on that, has the, the president been advised to wear a mask if he's outside, given that the D.C. air quality is code red today? No, I'm aware that the D.C. Uh, call quality is code red and I would uh, and for folks who are watching uh, at home or at work you can go to the EPA certain the EPA uh, website and there's a map of what your area what code uh, color your area is I just don't have anything to share on what the president is going to be uh, any changes uh, to how the president is going to be approaching this uh, so just not have anything at this time um, and two questions if I can um, to follow up from yesterday does the White House now have any reaction to the merger of the PGA and live golf and did this issue come up during Secretary Lincoln's meeting yesterday with the Crown Prince. Is that your idea? So I can say this, uh, the State Department, my colleague at the State Department, they put out a readout uh, of the meeting that Secretary Blinken uh, had uh, with the Saudi Arabia uh, government. So I would refer you uh, to their readout. Uh, I'm sure it's available online at the State Department. So again, we're just not going to comment on this deal. Uh, we are th th we're going to let the two parties speak uh, for themselves. What we're going to focus on from here is, uh, is we're going to continue to meet our commitment uh, to the American people at home and abroad. And certainly, uh, certainly uh, that includes the Middle East as well. We're just not going to comment at this time. One more try at this. Uh, some Senate Democrats are not really happy with the announcement of this merger. Uh, the Senate Finance Chairman Ron Wyden said they're going to launch a comprehensive investigation into this. He said it looks like a cash grab plan, plain and simple, and it raises troubling questions. Does the White House support Senate Democrats we're doing just, that investigation? We're just not going to comment. The House, the Congress is going to move forward the way that they are going to move forward. It's a co-equal uh, government, as you all know. I just don't have an assessment on this. I don't have a comment on this. Uh, this is a private entity, and we are being consistent here on not commenting on the actions of or mergers of private entities. Okay. Uh, thanks, Craig. <coughs> Does the White House have a position on whether Florida sending migrants to California or any other state for that matter is um, amounts to false imprisonment and kidnapping of those migrants? So one of the things that you've heard me say this multiple times uh, from here is the, about what these political stunts and what they mean. They're dangerous and they're unacceptable. I said this yesterday and I'll say this again. And we've seen them uh, happen over the last couple of months and all they do is cause confusion. And why is it they want to cause chaos and confusion? It doesn't make sense to me. And so uh, all unlawful border crossing, as I mentioned yesterday, are down. They're down by 70 percent uh, since the president enacted his plan after Title 42 was lifted uh, early uh, or mid May. And so we're addressing the challenges as we have done. We, we've done that through deterrence. We've done that through diplomacy and we've done that through enforcement. And so, again, the plan that he's doing is, is working. And so I just don't understand what are these governors doing? Why are they causing chaos? Why are they causing confusion? 
what does that actually do uh, for their constituency or for the people who are being put on these planes or on the buses? And it just doesn't make sense. They're playing games uh, and uh, political stunts just are not going to actually deal with the issue at hand. And they can come, they can come meet us at the middle. They can come and do a bipartisan uh, piece of legislation or look at the legislation that the president put forward on day one, a comprehensive immigration policy that he put forward, legislation. Why not look at that and come to the table and have that discussion with us instead of again, doing these political stunts, and it hurts. It only hurts local governments, it only hurts other states, and they're doing this without reaching out to those local government or, st or states, and it is putting people at risk, and it's dangerous and, again, unacceptable. Beyond, or in addition, perhaps, to it being a political stunt, do you think, or does the White House think, that it's breaking the law? So look, um, I'm going to be careful here. I cannot speak to the law. I know that um, I know comments have been made about a particular um, uh, governor who is now a candidate uh, uh, who has been accused of uh, sending these migrants. So I want to be really careful because he's a candidate. So I want to follow the Hatch Act. So but those are the two. That in his action as a governor. No, I just want to be. I still have to say this and be very, very careful. And what I will say more. It's about his action as a governor. Okay. All right. I'm just also being clear that he's also a candidate, and so I want to be careful and also just put that out there for the American people. But I will say more broadly speaking, if folks are uh, eager to see firsthand the significant drop in unlawful border uh, border crossings since the president put in his plan and that went into full effect, uh, you know, so it, it, I mean that's what they need to look at. They need to look at the numbers and the data that we have seen, 70 percent, 70 percent that it's come down. And so, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, it, you know, it is uh, what they're doing is completely, uh, completely dangerous. And so I cannot speak to the legal action. I cannot speak to if it's legal or not. What I can say it causes confusion. It, it's dangerous and it is unacceptable. And it doesn't solve the actual problem uh, that we have at hand. Great, thanks. Um, questions on two topics, but first I just want to quickly follow up on the question about Live Golf and, and the PGA Tour. President Biden has been very direct in the past about expressing his concerns about human rights violations mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia, about the Crown Prince's role in the killing of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Do you really mean to say that you have no comment on this massive investment by Saudi Arabia taking a huge foothold in one of the U.S.'s biggest sports? Well, we've been very clear. When it comes to mergers, when it comes to a private entity, we do not comment. I mean, that is not, that is not unnatural. That is not uncommon from us here at the White House. Look, when it comes it's to human... Wait, what, let, me finish. Let, let, me, let me finish. When it comes to human rights, we have been very clear. This president has not shied away on calling that out. And he's done that with Saudi Arabia. He's done that with other countries. We've been very clear about that. We will speak out. We do not shy away from that. And been, again, very, very clear. When it comes to a merger with these two entities, uh, that is something that we're just not going to comment on. But when it comes to human rights, we've been very clear. We're going to call that out. We are going to call that out with countries just across the globe. And the president has done that in these last two years. Okay. And, and then uh, in terms of the uh, first topic, dock workers uh, are disrupting operations at major uh, West Coast international ports over a labor dispute. The National Retail Administration is calling on the administration to intervene in negotiations to solve that labor dispute. We also have UPS workers that are currently uh, voting on whether or not to strike if they don't have a new contract by August 1st. Does the administration plan to intervene in any of those labor disputes? So when it comes to the West Ports, uh, I can say that the president respects the collective uh, bargaining process as the best way for workers and employers uh, to reach mutually beneficial solutions, which he, we have said before. Uh, and uh, Acting Secretary Sue and others in administration are regularly engaging with the parties, encouraging them to stay at the negotiating table and finish their work. Uh, but the path forward is uh, for the port workers and their employers to resolve the negotiations so that workers get the wages, benefits, and quality of life that they so deserve. And so that's what we're going to continue uh, to, to call for, asking both parties to come to the table so this can be uh, so this can be dealt with. As it relates to the UPS, you know, we're of course aware of the strike authorization vote that, that occurred, uh, which is not a vote uh, to go on strike, but again, to be clear, strike authorizations votes sometimes occur during collective bargaining to demonstrate 
demonstrate the solidarity of the union members in support of their negotiation team. So we're hopeful the parties can reach an agreement on, and satisfy both sides. And so again, the president uh, respects collective bargaining process and he believes that the, the best way for workers and employers to reach an agreement that ensures workers get their fair, fair benefits uh, and quality of life and wages that they deserve. So leave it there. Can the administration play an effective role uh, with an acting secretary at the helm of the Absolutely. Labor Department? Remember, this is an acting secretary that was a deputy uh, secretary under uh, uh, under Secretary Walsh for the first almost two years. And so we have complete confidence in, uh, in acting Secretary Sue, and uh, she has as you know, strong relationships with these uh, different labor organizations, and we we believe that uh, with her leadership, uh, certainly uh, she'll uh, she'll she'll engage in a way with the parties uh, that'll be effective. And then, real quick, uh, this is not a question about to weigh in on these presidential candidates. I understand you're going to respect the Hatch Act, but in terms of the president's schedule and and how he's been monitoring this, you know, we have three new candidates for president in the Republican race: Mike Pence, Chris Christie, Governor Doug Burgum. Is the president monitoring these announcements? Is he carving out any time in his schedule to watch uh, these announcements? Any, any thoughts on that? Well, I can tell you is the president's focus on the American people. That's his job. That's his job day in, day out. And you see that uh, as he talks about investing in America, as he talks about his economic policy for American people, as, he, as you saw him do, uh, negotiate a, a fiscally responsible bipartisan uh, budget. And uh, that is going to be his focus as it relates to the campaign and schedule or what he's going to be doing next. Certainly, I would refer you to his campaign or the DNC. Uh, but I know for sure the president is, is zeroed in and focused on the American people. And that's what he's going to continue to do. Go ahead. Thanks, Green. When the president walked from the residence to the Oval Office today, walks on the colonnade outside, do you know if he wore a mask? Um, nobody is wearing a mask walking from uh, on the colonnade. Are you saying outside, given the... I, I'm the just telling you, I don't have any changes uh, to, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have any changes uh, to what he'll be doing, but we've been walking back and forth on the colonnade, and no one is wearing a mask. It's a short walk. Um, and then a question on the Prime Minister's visit tomorrow. Can you give us a little bit of a readout of what we should expect from the, the two leaders, um, whether there are certain um, things the President is hoping to accomplish? Obviously, this is Prime Minister Sunak first visit to the White House. The two have met at other locations, but yeah. just wanted to hear a little bit more about this. They certainly tomorrow. have met a couple of times, as you just laid out, Tyler. Uh, a couple of things I will lay out. The President is looking forward, uh, obviously, to welcoming Prime Minister Sunak to the White House to further deepen the close economic relationship between United States and United Kingdom and to discuss key challenges and opportunities. This will be the fourth consecutive uh, month the President has met the Prime Minister. Already this year, they've met in Hiroshima at the G7 in Belfast in April and in San Diego in March at the AUKUS trilateral event about our long-term defense and security partnerships in the Indo-Pacific. So during this visit tomorrow, the two leaders will review a range of global issues, including our economic partnership, our shared support for Ukraine, and, it, and it defend, as it defends itself against Russia's brutal war of aggression, as well as further action to accelerate the clean energy transition. The President and the Prime Minister will also discuss the joint U.S.-U.K. leadership on critical and emerging technologies, technologies, as well as our work to strengthen our economic security. They will also review developments in Northern Ireland as part of their shared commitment to preserving the gains of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. And certainly we will have sh more to share and a readout once uh, their meeting occurs and ends tomorrow. Thanks, Marine. Like uh, sticking with the British Prime Minister's visit, one of the things that he supposedly is going to bring up during the meeting is this idea of a creation of a global watchdog agency over AI. Mm -hmm. Is that something the president thinks is needed? Is that something that he would support? So look, uh, you've, you've heard from the president and from us on how we see this growing technology, AI, and we believe uh, that how it moves forward uh, should be done in a responsible way. The vice president had a meeting with uh, four CEOs recently. The president has held other, uh, other meetings with his staff to discuss uh, AI. I'm not going to get ahead of what conversation is going to be had uh, during this bilat that they're going to uh, that's going that's, that they're going to have tomorrow uh, with the prime minister. I'll let them have their conversation. We certainly have a readout, but we've been very clear about how we see uh, moving forward with AI and how it needs to be done in a responsible way. We need to make sure that we're protecting the privacy of Americans, uh, and so we'll definitely continue to speak to that. Um, I was hoping you can clarify, uh, as it relates to the Live PGA merger yesterday, the President was asked about 
make this merger during the cabinet uh, meeting and he said I'm going to be in the PGA. Can you clarify, had he been briefed about the merger before? Was he aware of what Absolutely, he was Absolutely, he had been, yes. And what did he mean then by, was he just laughing off the question? I just think that he was basically saying I'm not going to comment. Okay, uh, um, uh, Pope Francis today um, underwent successful surgery, we're told. Um, I'm wondering, given the close relationship the president has developed with him, with him, has there been any outreach to the Vatican or, or between the two uh, men themselves? Well, obviously, I don't, I don't have a, any call to read out, but obviously our thoughts are with, uh, with the Pope, and certainly we are hoping uh, that he has a, a full and quick uh, recovery. And then on your announcement about the Secretary General's visit in a couple weeks, has the president ruled out asking um, Mr. Stoltenberg to extend his tenure again? Uh, with NATO, and is this a subject that um, he might raise with the Prime Minister tomorrow? Uh, Pres Prime Minister Sunak has been advocating for his Defense Minister as a potential successor. So I'm not going to get ahead of the conversation that they're going to have. I can say, and we've said it here uh, yesterday, that the President believes that the Secretary has been has done an outsta outstanding job, a superb job, as a, a as Secretary General, especially in this critical moment in history, uh, leading the alliance that we have uh, responded to uh, res in response to Russia's war. Uh, in Ukraine. And so we're very, very grateful uh, for his leadership. I'm not going to get into speculation from here. Uh, I'm not going to get into what the process or how the president is thinking about uh, the next steps here. Uh, but certainly we are incredibly, uh, incredibly grateful uh, to, the, to uh, the Secretary General. I'm just going to go on. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Karina. So you noted in your topper that climate change is making wildfires worse. And just to put a finer point on it, should the public expect this kind of thing to be happening more often where large parts of the East Coast are covered with smoke? So look, I, I, I'm not an expert. I can't predict how this is going to move forward or how this is going to look in the future. Uh, but certainly we've seen, I mentioned the West Coast has dealt with this for some time. Uh, so this is not uncommon, sadly. Uh, it's only getting worse. Uh, but this is why the president has made climate change change uh, a priority. This is why he's taken the aggressive actions that he's taking, historic actions, uh, and he's certainly going to continue uh, to, uh, to stay focused on how we move forward in dealing with climate change. But again, I'm not an expert, uh, but clearly, as we have seen over the last couple of decades, climate change has been uh, a real problem. It is the science that shows us that. And if when Secretary Blinken goes to China, is it the President's goal or hope that he meets directly with President Xi, and is that sort of what the conversations that are happening behind the scenes are? So look, um, I'm not going to, certainly not going to get ahead of what uh, what a conversation or what, uh, uh, what that will look like. The President has said uh, he wants to talk to President Xi, certainly don't have a, a call to preview for all of you at this time. And as it relates to uh, Secretary Blinken, I would refer you to the State Department, but we have said, uh, you know, we're hoping that, uh, that uh, he will be able to travel to China when uh, when the time is right, just don't have anything at this time. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one follow-up on the U Ukraine dam situation. You said that you're still assessing who's responsible, but can you say in your conversations with the Ukrainians what they're telling you in terms of what additional aid they might need uh, to respond to this situation? Will the president uh, be discussing it with Prime Minister Sunak tomorrow? And then separately, is there any plan at all for the president to talk to President Zelensky? And if not, why not? So, of course, um, uh, Ukraine is going to be uh, at the top of discussion uh, tomorrow. It is NATO, and uh, as you know, NATO, uh, the Na NATO alliance has been uh, strengthened because of the president's uh, uh, because of the president's uh, leadership. And so, of course, Ukraine and Russia will be uh, top of mind and discuss. I'm not going to I'm not going to go into details of what they're going to be talking about. Certainly, we'll have a readout uh, that will lay uh, lay more of the conversation. Uh, I don't have any specifics to share on what the conversations that that were had with Ukraine in regards to the dam. I just, I could just tell you, we've been in touch and we're ready to help in any way uh, that we can. Just don't have, a, don't have a list of what they're asking for, or what was discussed. Okay, and then on a separate topic, a couple months ago, we were all uh, talking about TikTok, and there was legislation put forward on the Hill that three months ago um, Jake Sullivan uh, came out in support of, and then we haven't really heard much since. Can you say whether you're working at all with uh, the Hill on making this become law? Uh, are you working with the Senate, the House, uh, or have you sort of given up on any 
authority to restrict TikTok and other apps that you think are so harmful? It, certainly this is important to the president, to the administration, uh, this type of legislation that Jake talked about a couple months ago. Don't have an update for you. We are always in constant uh, contact on different pieces of legislation uh, with the House and the Senate. I just don't have an update on where we are currently with this particular legislation. That's great. Um, so Walgreens unveiled a new look for their stores. Uh, they unveiled that in Chicago, and it has basically everything locked up uh, in part because of the theft that they've seen. A uh, recent study shows that 50% uh, of retail workers have seen some sort of retail theft, and another uh, nearly 50% are afraid to go to work. So is the president aware of retail theft, and how come the problems become so per se? Per uh, per pervasive under his tenure. So look, what I can tell you is unlike congressional Republicans, the president has taken action. He has taken action to deal with uh, with uh, with the crime, hiring police officers. Uh, we've you've seen that from his actions that he's taken to cut crime. And he uh, and it started with the American Rescue Plan. The Re American Rescue Plan had billions of dollars uh, that went into communities to hire police officers uh, to it, it, to to make sure that we held we had accountability as well uh, on the ground. And let's not forget his Safer uh, American Plan uh, to fund the police and invest in crime prevention. So we have taken actions. We have made sure that we do everything that we can uh, to try and protect communities and to make sure that police officers are hired. And so, look, instead of Congress, uh, you know, passing legislation or wanting uh, to cut uh, or defund uh, the police, we're doing the opposite. And so we would love to work with Congress and see how else we can be helpful to communities. But the president has taken action. Again, the American Rescue Plan, the Safer Communities, uh, Safer Community uh, America Plan, and he's going to continue to do what he can to make sure that we keep communities safe. I want to ask you quickly about the visit uh, tomorrow. The United Kingdom left the EU in 2020. Um, the UK remains our closest ally, or uh, one of our closest allies, as, as you said. How come we're not negotiating a trade deal with them? So look, I think in that conversation that they'll have tomorrow, for sure, uh, the economy will be uh, part of that conversation. Uh, look, they have the largest bilateral investment relationship in the world when you think about the UK and United States, uh, and that's a source of strength and has been an important foundation of economic growth over the years in both of our countries. And so I'm sure when the two leaders meet, uh, they will take, uh, they will continue to take steps to deepen that economic partnership. And so I'm not going to get ahead of what the president and the prime minister are going to speak to. But again, they have one of the strongest, largest bilateral investment relationship in the world. And I think that matters. Is the president comfortable with the UK leading on artificial intelligence? Because that's one of the things the Prime Minister is Look, I'm not going to get ahead of, again, of what they're going to discuss. I've laid out uh, where we see, what we have done here uh, and how we see moving forward on, on artificial intelligence. But again, I'm just not going to get ahead of it. We'll have a readout tomorrow. Uh, you mentioned the governments, U.S. and Canada, working together, talking about the wildfires. Has, but has President Biden spoken with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau about this? Any any offers of anything different that has not already been offered or long-term plans yeah. they've been discussing? So I can tell you this. Our uh, Deputy uh, National Security Advisor, Liz Sherwood Randall, uh, has been in touch with her counterparts, and she has been for the, since last week in offering it and listening to them and off, making sure we're offering any assistance that they might need. We mentioned the 600 plus uh, firefighters and personnel that we have provided to Canada to help them deal with this wildfire. I don't have a call to read out between uh, the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, we've also, as I mentioned, been in touch with uh, governors and, uh, and local government as well uh, to uh, make sure that we are offering any assistance that they might need. Can I also just ask, is the, is the president watching, watching uh, some of the pushback from kind of more conservative Republicans uh, in the House regarding the debt ceiling vote, their concerns? Does he have any thoughts about that effort and also how it might impact future dealing with the House? Look, and I mentioned this last week, uh, I, I, even earlier this week, the president has uh, done has signed more than 350 bipartisan uh, pieces of legislation, signed them into law. And I think that shows how the president has been able to work uh, it, work with Congress in a bipartisan way. And I think that's important. And we hope that continues because there's so much more that needs to be done as far as lowering costs, making sure the wealthy pay their fair share. There's a list of things that we would love to work in a bipartisan way with Congress. And so the president 
certainly he's an optimist. He believes that we can continue to do that work, and certainly uh, we're going to try. Uh, as it relates to what Congress is saying or Congre congressional Republicans are saying, look, this was a bipartisan, fiscally responsible uh, piece of legislation. Uh, it was important to the American people. We believe they, they are the ones that won because we were able to protect some of the programs that they truly need just to make ends meet. We're able to protect some of the, all of the historic pieces of legislation that the president put forward to deal with an economy that doesn't leave anybody behind. So the president is very proud of what he was able to do with Speaker McCarthy and the other leaders, and we hope that type of bipartisanship continues. Uh, certainly, I, I'm not going to get into uh, hypotheticals on how uh, that's going to look down the road, but we have a record. We have a record in the last two years to show that we have been able to get that done. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about, uh, we are two weeks away from the state visit. Uh, Secretary Austin was in Delhi this week, uh, and I guess there's some other high-profile visits happening between them now and then. Uh, would defense be an important part of the discussions with President, Prime Minister uh, Modi and President Biden? Say that last part. Would defense be an important part of discussions between the two leaders? Oh, defense. Yeah. So. Look, I, I don't have anything more to say at this time about the visit. As we get closer, certainly uh, we will have more to share. What I've said is the uh, upcoming visit, we believe, will, will affirm the deep and close partnership between the United States and India and the warm bonds of uh, family and friendship that link the Americans and Indians together. So that is incredibly important. The Prime Minister and the President will discuss ways to strengthen our two countries, shared commitment to free, open, uh, prosperous, and secure Indo-Pacific, and our shared resolve uh, to elevate our strategic technology partnership, including defense. Uh, so that certainly will be talked about in clean energy and space, but I'm just not going to get into details on what uh, the particulars will be. And as we get closer to June 22nd, we we'll certainly have more to share. I also have the uh, guest list gone out for the state dinner and the welcome ceremony. How big? So as you know, we've done about, this will be our third state dinner. We usually don't release those uh, guest lists until closer to the date. And so I suspect that we will do, we will do the same process with this. In sense of number of people. I don't have a number to share. And has the first lady decided on the menu and the entertainment? <laughs> I don't have anything to share. Wait, what is today? It's like so early. <laughs> Uh, we still have about two weeks left, and we uh, that's uh, plenty of time. That's like multiple years in, this, in, in these types of administration and presidential administrations. Uh, so as soon as we have more to share, we certainly will, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't expect that it will happen uh, before the week of the actual, uh, actual event. Okay, John. Thanks a lot, Green. Yesterday, the World Bank issued a report in which they indicated that the global economy is slowing down dramatically. They're forecasting an annualized a, a rate of growth of just 2.1 percent for this coming year. Is that something that you agree with? You see uh, the U.S. economy similarly slowing down at a substantial rate? So I haven't seen the report. Certainly I have to talk to the, our economists about the report that you're speaking to. What I can share with you is what we're doing here uh, and how we think it is going to be important uh, to strengthening the global economy, right, in, in making sure that the debt limit was dealt with. I think that was an important way uh, to dealing with the global economy, having a, a bipartisan, important budget negotiation that was clearly uh, signed into law. That is incredibly important, making sure we're protecting jobs, protecting retirement accounts, uh, uh, for Americans, which is what the president was, was able to do, making sure people stay on their health care, and protecting other incredibly important uh, programs like vet veteran programs, for example, Social Security, Medicare. So because of the work that this president has done the last two years and just most recently, uh, we are in a better place with our economy, with the American economy. I, I would have, again, would have to speak to the economists about this particular uh, piece of data that you're sharing. The economy has been incredibly resilient. Uh, do you expect that can to continue uh, over the course of the remainder of this year? And what is it that this White House can do uh, to prevent this slowdown <laughs> in the economy given the fact that there is a divided Congress. So look, uh, and you're right, the U.S. economy has been very resilient, uh, and that is a lot because of the, the actions that this president has taken. Uh, and making sure that we turned the economy around from when he walked in, uh, as you know, it was a crisis. And so we've been saying this. We've been saying that we believe that we're we're transitioning to a, a, a more uh, steady, a steady growth, stable growth, and that's what we're seeing when you look at the job numbers that come out every month. And that's what 
we believe we're headed to. Uh, and so the president's certainly going to continue to do, uh, he's going to now implement those historic pieces of legislation where it's going to create uh, more jobs and it's going to help uh, continue to make sure that the economy stays resilient. The, uh, the uh, minority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, has uh, said that the budget caps for defense spending in the uh, budget agreement are insufficient to meet the challenges as it relates to Russia, Iran, China. Um, does the president share those concerns and does the president intend to submit any sort of supplemental spending package um, as it relates to either pumping up defense spending or specifically providing additional military assistance for Ukraine? So as the president said last week, and I'll quote him, he said, if there's any existential need for additional funding, I have no doubt we'll be able to get it. That's what the president said uh, when, when the uh, budget agreement uh, was done. We have been grateful for the widespread bipartisan support for Ukraine and expect that to continue. Uh, and uh, and so it doesn't rule out, the, bu the budget agreement does not rule out uh, additional emergency funding, whether it is for Ukraine or extreme weather. Uh, and so the president is very confident on that. As you know, there is now an appropriations process, as uh, as Director Young spoke to. Certainly not, it, we are now in back in regular order, right, which is why it was important about getting this budget agreement done. So I'm going to let the appropriation process uh, move forward, not going to get ahead of that. But the President, as he stated himself, uh, he is in, he's confident. So more generally speaking, he is okay with where the budget caps are for the. I'm not. I'm, look, there's an appropriations process that's going to get going. That is regular order. That is where we're supposed to be. We're going to let that process go. As you're asking me about uh, more defense funding, as the minority leader, as you just stated, uh, feels like there's not enough in defense. Uh, the president has said he, if there is, if there is need, existential need to additional funding, he believes that we will get there. So that's what I can share with you on that part. Let me see. Good, Alex. I haven't called in you in a while. Um, hi, Karina. Um, the United States, um, as you know, has far higher incidence of uh, car fatalities, both of drivers and pedestrians, and cyclists, than almost all, I think, all other wealthy nations. And we're about to enter the most dangerous time of the year for car accidents, the summer months. Has this administration done enough on that front? Um, or has maybe the, I don't know, the, the automotive, the highway lobby sort of had its way as it has had with many other administrations? So, look, and you're right. Uh, we face a crisis here in America when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to driving passengers, drivers, passengers, pedestrians, cyclists. Each year, more than 40,000 people uh, uh, have to are, die in these types of crashes, and so uh, and this is uh, comparable to gun deaths, and it should not be this way. So, the Department of uh, Transportation launched a national roadway safety strategy in early of 2022 uh, that, to tackle this type of crisis at every level and so uh, while it's encouraging to see the death level has kind of the death leveling off uh, somewhat in the last two quarters because we have seen uh, that occur it is no time to let up and so we're going to uh, DOT is going to continue to take major steps to keep people safe and I think that's important again they've put a plan together uh, to try to tackle uh, this incredibly uh, uh, unfortunate situation. I, I know you won't comment on the case involving the president's son, but the uh, president previously criticized the Supreme Court ruling that his legal team is preparing to use should he be charged um, as an affront to common sense and the Constitution. I just want to know if that statement from June of last year still holds or if he is viewing that ruling in a new light. I'm just not going to comment on this. And on the merger, the Wall Street Journal editorial board said this is more than just a, a private deal. It's really about MBS sort of thumbing his nose at the president. Um, they point out that the Saudis entered a China broker deal with Iran. They are cozying up to Maduro, cut oil production ahead of Blinken's visit, helping Russia, driving up prices, hurting Biden. And they write, is Saudi Arabia's crown prince Mohammed bin Salman trolling President Biden? Call it the revenge of the pariah. I can't comment to uh, uh, or lay out what the thinking of, of uh, the Saudi Arabia uh, official or government are. Um, as it relates to this merger, we're just not going to comment on this deal. Uh, it is uh, two private entities, and we're just not going to comment. Is making the president look weak if there's no comment? When you have Democratic senators saying that the president's Justice Department should be looking at this with respect to antitrust questions, foreign registration questions, 
doesn't no comment fall short? It's, first of all, the president does not look weak. This is a president, uh, because of his leadership, has brought together uh, our allies and partners again, which uh, certainly was our, our, our foreign policy relationship with heads of states uh, was gutted and destroyed by the last administration. And this is the president that has been able to strengthen NATO alliance again because of his leadership, has been able to bring more than 50 countries together uh, to help support Ukraine as they're battling uh, the aggression from Russia. And that is occurring because of this president's leadership. And so I think that is important. And because we're saying that we're not going to speak to a private merger, a company's merger, a private entity, does not make the president weak. He's briefed on it, though, right? It does not make the president. Of course, he's going to be briefed on it. He's the president of the United States. So but it does not. But that. But we're not going to comment on it because it is a private entity. We've been consistent. So be We've been consistent. It? He's the president of the United States. He 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 gets to know everything that's going on in the in the world in the country. Right. That is important uh, for him to know. He is. He's one of the leaders of the free Typical world. To get briefed on private. All right, this is, <laughs> I, I, I've answered your question. We're going to move on. Go ahead, Courtney. Thank you. Will the president withdraw his nomination of Gail Ho for a judgeship in the Southern District of New York? Today's culture vote in the Senate is canceled. So the president is proud uh, to have put him forward, and we're going to continue uh, to support his nomination. Do you have an expectation of when another vote will be scheduled? I don't have a, I don't have a timeline on when that vote will happen. I can tell you that the president continues to support. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I have two questions about events at the White House tomorrow. Firstly, on the Sunak visit, mm -hmm. um, the Prime Minister has echoed some of President Biden's strong words uh, on Taiwan. <coughs> so I'm wondering if the two leaders are going to discuss related China issues like investments, semiconductors, supply chains. And is it a priority for the administration to get U.S.-U.K. alignment on these issues? Just not going to get ahead of their conversation tomorrow. Uh, I just laid out what they're looking uh, forward to particularly, particularly discussing. This is the fourth time that they've met in four months. Uh, and it is a it is a, a our closest relationship, an important relationship, especially as we talk about Ukraine and and uh, the war in Ukraine that was clearly uh, an aggression by Russia. I'm just not going to get into specifics of what what they're going to speak about. I talked about the economy. Uh, I talked about Ukraine uh, and certainly and clean energy, which is going to be incredibly important. Uh, but just not going to go into any more specifics. And we'll certainly have a readout. Then moving on to the Pride event tomorrow, this is likely to provoke some political or politicized pushback, especially from um, you know some of the states that have passed legislation targeting sexual minorities or from countries that have done the same. So could I just hear from you, why does the White House feel that this event is important, especially in this context? So we've had multiple events celebrating the LGBTQ plus community, multiple. Uh, and uh, this is a president that has been a strong ally, uh, a vice president that has been a strong ally, a second gentleman, a first lady that has been a strong ally of the, of the community. And it is important, he feels it is important, they feel it is important to lift up a community, uh, to uh, lift up their accomplishments and what they've been able to do uh, for the community. And so we think it's an important moment. And let's not forget what we're seeing across the country from state houses. More than 600 pieces of legislation, anti-LGBTQ plus legislation, a few hundred of those are against transgender youth. And so we have not seen that type of anti-sentiment uh, anti against this community in decades. And so we believe that uh, not only does this community need to be celebrated and continue to be celebrated as he's done many times before in this in this past two years, uh, but we also need to make sure that we let the community know uh, that the president has their back and we're going to continue to fight for them. And so that is important. I think that is important uh, to be able to bring a couple of thousand uh, Americans uh, here to the White House to let them know that this president is going to continue to fight for them. And that's the message that we want to make sure that gets out there. I haven't, go ahead. Oh, on the issue of asylum seekers arriving in New York, uh, recently Governor Hochul and New York City Mayor Adams, um, you know, press called upon the federal government, the Biden administration, to somehow work um, on relaxing some of the uh, work permitting requirements 
um, easing restrictions so that some of these asylum seekers can get their work permits before um, this uh, six month waiting period. I'm wondering if the White House has any update on that, any, you know, just stance on, on those discussions? So I don't have any updates on the work requirements. I know that's been in the news uh, for some time now. Uh, what I will say is that uh, we have, uh, have had direct communications and conversations uh, with these interior cities and states who are dealing uh, with uh, the, with an influx of immigrants uh, in their city and in their state. And we've had um, very uh, multiple conversations, not just with New York, but also Chicago and other, again, other interior cities and states. And what I will say is that uh, we have uh, we have uh, offered assistance and resources. I have announced, uh, and, I've, and it's been announced, not just be, by me, but by DHS, uh, the more than 200 million, I believe more than 300 million of, uh, of resources to those, uh, to those particular inter interior states. And also, I have said, even said this yesterday, that uh, a, a, a large piece of that has been provided to New York. And so we're going to continue to have those conversations. We're going to continue to assist uh, the best way that we can, uh, as we have been doing for the past several months. Uh, go ahead, Owen, in the back. Good afternoon, Cree. Uh, in Chicago, uh, over Memorial Day weekend, over 50 people were shot, several killed in separate incidents. And I know that you've discussed the action this administration has taken to try to reduce gun violence, but I want to know what the president has to say to individual Chicago residents living in neighborhoods where bullets are flying and can't wait for laws to take effect, what the president would tell that person. We will say that we are doing everything that we can uh, to make sure their communities are safe. And the president, and it's not just our words, uh, our actions show that. The president signed into uh, two, uh, two dozen, almost two, more than two dozen executive actions to deal with gun violence. And the president has also continued to call on Congress to take additional action. We are very proud of the bipartisan piece of legislation on gun violence to, to, to uh, fight gun violence that was signed just about a year ago. Uh, and that was something that we had not seen in 30 years. And because of the president's leadership, we were able to get that done. The president also has made clear that Congress needs to do more. Uh, and so he's taken action, uh, and certainly our hearts go out uh, to families or individuals who have lost loved ones. It is, uh, it is devastating to see when you hear a statistic where guns are what is taking the lives of our children, the number one killer of our children, that's devastating to hear. That is something that the president wants to prevent and wants to deal with, which is why he took those actions. Uh, so we're going to continue to call on Congress to take action. And, uh, and I will say, and we'll be very loud about that and very clear uh, about that. Uh, and I will also say again, uh, our hearts go out uh, to uh, folks who have lost loved ones to gun violence. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to ask about Ukraine and NATO. Uh, the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, last week said that Ukraine's rightful place is in NATO. Will this be something that the two discuss when they meet tomorrow? Uh, look, I'm not going to get into specifics of what's going to happen. Again, I, I know you guys have asked me a couple of questions, but our commitment uh, to NATO's open door policy stands, uh, and so just not going to get ahead of that. Given the meeting tomorrow and that the NATO Secretary General is going to be here on Monday, is President Biden thinking about a renewed push toward uh, Ukraine's admission into NATO? I mean, we've been, I mean, nothing has changed of how we've uh, answered this question before. Uh, you know, an alliance decision is between the 31 uh, uh, allies and uh, an aspirant country. That's how it's dealt with. You have to, there's a process and there's an open do door policy. That's what we support. We've been, we've supported that for some time now, but right now we are focused to ma on making sure that Ukraine has everything that it needs uh, to fight Russia's aggression. And and you heard us just about last week uh, announce another PDA of $300 million. We're going to continue to do that every other week or so and continue to show our support for Ukraine, whether it is uh, aid or systems. And, uh, and, you know, we've done that the last 15 months. And so we're going to, you know, we're going to do everything that we can to support the Ukrainian people as they fight in an in a incredibly impressive and brave, uh, a brave fight. Um, you said repeatedly here that the White House didn't want to comment on a private entity. But a quick search back through briefings in recent months finds that you commented on J.P. Morgan's merger or purchase of First Republic. 
And then you were asked last November about Elon Musk buying Twitter, saying we're going to keep an eye on that decision. Does and the I, decision to not comment today have anything to do with the fact that the Secretary of State is in Saudi Arabia right now? No, not at all. Not at all. We're just not going to comment on this. And uh, and look, I also said with the the the, uh, the Elon Musk, I also said the same thing that I said today is that we're not going to comment. Uh, on a private entity. I actually said those words as we talked about Elon Musk and Twitter. And so that's going to continue. We're not going to comment on this. Uh, we're going to focus on the American people. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, on what their needs are uh, as it relates to, uh, you know, American families and as it relates to uh, abroad and also uh, the, the Middle East as well. And so that's the president's focus right now. Uh, but I've always been very clear. We just are not, uh, not going to comment on on uh, any types of mergers and uh, I know you pulled out those those specific things but I also continued and said I'm just not going to comment on mergers or Thank private entities.